Hello, welcome back. Thank you very much for watching many of my videos and uh, because of your encouragement and uh, liking and subscription that uh, this channel has grown quite a lot recently. So thank you very much and uh, I hope that you will like many of the new videos as well which I am going to upload very soon. So today I am going to talk about a topic which is very important for engineering and science and this is about friction. So here I will be talking about the origin of friction. Why do we have friction between two surfaces? So I will explore the, the scientific basis of friction. Friction has been studied for quite long time. If we consider Leonardo da Vinci as the first person who started studying friction on a scientific basis, then we can see that it took almost like 400 years to properly understand friction. Why there is friction between two surfaces? So it is a very common experience when we slide two surfaces. So for example, if you slide your two palms together, you feel there is a force acting. You are not able to slide very easily. There is some friction acting. So this is what is known as friction. So this is a very common experience that we understand. When we have solid body on another solid body and this is stationary and this one we apply some force here. So as soon as we apply force, there will be some force acting here in this direction and this will be equal to this force and opposite in direction. So this is our external force, this is the force I am applying and between these two solids, these two solids will experience a force which will act at this interface equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. So let's say if we call this one as P then this is F. So F is the frictional force. This body has got some weight of its own, so there is a force acting downwards, so we can represent that as N. Friction force is the force which acts between two solid bodies when one of the surface, one of the solid is slid or pulled in one direction, then friction acts in the opposite direction. So this is a very simple definition of friction force. So everybody as a child must have experienced that when you have a toy and you attach the toy to a string and then you pull in this direction then this toy will slide with the float surface and therefore you will experience some friction. So there are ways to reduce friction but here in this video I would like to explain the origin of friction. What are the mechanisms of friction? Now if you keep the same body on an inclined surface so depending upon the weight and the frictional condition here and this angle of inclination there will be a time when this body will start sliding on this one. So as soon as it starts sliding, we call it a dynamic friction. But when the solid is still stationary, still there will be force acting here, friction force, which we call it as static friction. So for example, I can do this experiment very simple. So this is eraser and on this ruler I will slide. So for example, right now, if I try to move it, there will be some force acting. So if I am tilting this in this way, at some point it starts moving. So that is because of the, the weight of this body, the component of this weight acting in this direction is the force. And this force will be opposed by a friction force. Once this is higher, greater than the initial friction force that is acting, the body will start 
moving. So this is the basic definition of friction. So now just now I talked about static friction and dynamic friction. So this is friction force and this can be time or it can be a distance. So friction force we write in Newton and distance can be millimeter or meter. So when you start measuring the force, so this force is same as the friction force. So we will use a spring balance here and we will measure the force. So starting from zero, zero dis displacement, as soon as the body starts moving, there will be a drop in the friction force and then it will be more or less constant. Although it may not be exactly constant, it might just fluctuate, but this is the kind of graph you will get for friction force against the distance. So this one is known as the static friction and this one is known as the dynamic friction force and accordingly we can find out the coefficient of friction. So in both cases the mechanism that is acting at the interface is the same. Another thing you must have learnt about the sliding friction and the rolling friction. So we know that sliding friction is much larger than the rolling friction. So the rolling friction is very very small but still in the rolling friction also there is a sliding going on. There is some amount of sliding and some other phenomena that happens in the rolling. So the much of the contribution to, uh, to friction in rolling condition comes from sliding. So therefore it is very important that we understand sliding friction. And here we will try to understand the science behind sliding friction. So if we look at this interface, the two surfaces, what we will see is that these surfaces, even though the surfaces may look smooth. So for example, here I've got this ruler, which is acrylic or plastic, and this is a rubber. So even though surfaces look quite smooth, but if you are looking at these two surfaces at microscopic level, then you will see that the surfaces are not that smooth. These surfaces have got roughness. And these kind of protrusions are known as asperities, single, singular is asperity. If you look at this, these two surfaces or if you look at the interface at very microscopic scale, you will find that the contact is only at these spots. The rest places there is no contact. So that means the apparent area which we can see here, if this is the apparent area, the actual area is only a fraction of the apparent area. So we should understand this, this point that the contacts are only at these asperities, not at all, all points. So if we magnify this one, then we can see that this looks something like this. So this is the real contact. So based on the concept of the contact between two surfaces, friction has been divided into two parts and it is known as two term model. The first one we call adhesive friction and the second one we call cohesive also known as plowing. So that means when two surfaces are in contact with each other, so at these points there will be adhesion. So that means two surfaces are so close to each other that they will attract each other and that is known as adhesion. So because of this addition, there will be some frictional force and the cohesive force comes because the sum of the asperities might scratch the surface of the, the second surface. 
So because of this scratching action, there will be some force required. So if we are moving this one here, so some force will be required for the scratching, for the removal of the material. So this is known as cohesive because this is much more than the interface. So the adhesive force acts only at the interface, whereas the cohesive force acts much deeper, much below the surface because between these two surfaces, one surface can be harder. So for example, if this one is harder and this is softer, then these asperities can go much deeper into this. And as they go deeper, they will scratch the surface. So this surface will be scratched and in order to scratch the surface, in order to conduct this mechanical action, some energy has to be spent and that is the friction force coming from the cohesive action. So this is coming from the adhesive action. So just one example of adhesion we can show you is, for example, this rubber, we keep on this ruler and it slides quite easily at some point. But now if I want to, if I press this one little bit harder, then what will happen? it doesn't fall. Even up to this point, it hasn't fallen. Wow. So that means the friction force is really, really high. In fact, this is the addition force. You can see from the other side that at real contact area, the two surfaces are glued together, almost attracting each other and they are glued together. They are, the force and this is known as adhesive force, adhesion. The force is so strong that this force can take the weight of this eraser. So this force is extremely high and this eraser doesn't move. But if I remove this one and just put it gently, then it moves. So this is the contribution of adhesion. So you can see that because of adhesion, the force, adhesive force is so strong that it can almost take the weight of the body. And the cohesive part we can understand by this example. So for example, I have got this aluminium surface and I have got a nail which is steel. We know that steel is harder than aluminium surface. So if I press very hard and if I slide, I have to do some work, there is some force and what is happening is this nail, the, the pointed nail is actually scratching the surface and here during this scratching, it is forming some abrasive scratch as well as some plastic deformation is happening. So both are happening here, but this is so this is the force that I'm applying and this will be part of the friction force. So this is how we can understand friction has two components, the adhesive component and the cohesive component. The adhesive component is because of the actual area of contact where the two surfaces come so close to each other that they attract each other. And the cohesive part comes because of the mechanical action for example, scratching or plastic deformation. So this is known as two term model and friction can be understood easily by these two term model. Now let me discuss what are these two term components. So what is adhesion or adhesive force? So adhesion can be divided into several different parts. So adhesion we know is the attractive attraction between two solid bodies when they come in very, very close contact. So the first one, we can call it adhesive force because of Van der Waal forces. Here I, I will discuss only in briefly what are these components of adhesive friction. So Van der Waal forces act between any two surface. It doesn't have to be polymer or metal or ceramics. It can be anything. The 
vulnerable well forces act between two, sol two solid bodies. So when two solid bodies are very close in contact, so what will happen is the atoms of these so the atoms of these two bodies, so each body has got many atoms here and these atoms will, each atom has got its own field, electrical or magnetic field here because of the electronic structure and basically they interact with each other and therefore there will be some force. So in some cases it will be a kind of dipole and in some cases it will be a non-dipole but also there is a possibility of induced dipole. So these dipoles are plus and minus and here plus and minus and there will be some attractive force acting between the two surfaces. So it happens between every atom, between any two atoms they attract each other because of the van der Waals forces. So this contributes to adhesive force. The second one is electrostatic. So electrostatic force, we know that when there are two solid bodies and if these solid bodies are charged, that means it has got positive charge and it has got negative charge, there will be a force acting between these two and this is known as electrostatic force. When there are two surfaces, there is always possibility that they have some charge. So for example, this may have some charge and because of this charge, they will attract each other. So this is electrostatic force. So in fact, charge is produced while the sliding takes place. So during the friction event, the charges can be produced between the two surfaces and these charges will attract each other. Similarly, the van der Waals forces also produce some dipoles, which are basically some charges and therefore there will be some electrostatic force acting between the two. This also contributes to adhesive force. The third one is hydrogen bond. So hydrogen bond acts between two materials which has got hydrogen as part of its molecules. So one very good example is H2O. So in H2O, oxygen atom and hydrogen atom. So these are together and they have got certain structure or dimension. So this is H and this is O. So H has got one electron of its own and O has got eight electrons of its own. And because of this, the structure that it has, what will happen is this part will get slightly positive and this, so in this water molecule, this part, which is towards the hydrogen, it gets slightly positive whereas this part gets slightly negative because here we have more electrons and therefore this one will act as negative part and this will act as positive part as well as this one. So this will become like a dipole which has got positive and negative part. So if another water molecule comes then what will happen is this negative part will get attracted to the positive part because this has got positive and negative. So this is how the water molecules will come together making hydrogen bond. And this is the reason why water is in the liquid form because there is a hydrogen bond between the water molecules. So the hydrogen bonds will form when the surface has got hydrogen and many of the surfaces has got hydrogen as the termination group. So the molecules has got hydrogen and therefore the hydrogen will form a hydrogen bond with these another hydrogen species here. So this is hydrogen bond. So hydrogen bond will also contribute to adhesive force. The fourth one which we will discuss is called cold welding or this is also known as metallic adhesion. So this happens between two metals. So for example, if two metals come in very close contact and especially if they are similar metals, for example, steel and steel or copper and copper, aluminum and aluminum. So these two surfaces has got atoms here and this one also has got atoms here. So because they come in so close contact, there will be some diffusion depending upon the time 
Of course, the diffusion will take some time, but these atoms will move towards each other. So they will form a kind of very strong bond, which is almost like a welding. So that's why this is known as cold welding. So whenever two metal surfaces are close together, this kind of diffusion will take place and this will form a cold welding or junction and this will also contribute to adhesive force. Another type of adhesion happens which is known as phononic. So phononic force happens because when two surfaces slide against each other, so for example one surface has got these atoms and another surface has got also these atoms. So for example, if we consider two layers of atoms, so they are interacting with each other. So this atomic bond is acting like a spring. So this is like a spring here. So when this surface is sliding on a surface, there will be interatomic interaction and therefore this surface will move in a manner which will be like a jumping from one spot to another. So one place which is chemically low energy state, so from one low energy state to another, so it will move like a jump. So we can visualize like this, so for example if you have got a ball attached to a spring and you are moving this and what will happen is as you move this one this ball will jump from one spot to another and this leads to vibration so the phononic friction, friction or phononic force is basically the vibration force we can call it vibration but this is atomic scale vibration and this will also produce some heat so this also contributes to adhesive force because this requires work. The work has to be done and friction as you know is an energy dissipation process. So how the energy is being dissipated? So in this case the energy is being dissipated in the form of atomic vibration and heat. And the last factor for adhesion we call it electronic friction. So electronic friction happens because of the actions of electrons. So what happens is when you slide a surface, so for example, especially you will find that with the insulator. So for example, if this is insulator and you slide against a surface, so for example, if I slide against a cloth or any kind of uh, other kind of insulating surface, then this sliding action will create some charge here. And you must have done some experiment where this charge can be seen because this piece will get so much charge that this will attract some small particles. So for example, if you uh, leave a small pieces of paper, this, so this piece of material will actually attract small particles and pieces of paper because of the charge. So this is the action of electronic friction because charge gets accumulated and this charge basically helps to uh, attract small particles and this attraction is basically electrostatic uh, attraction. Also, when you talk about metals, so for example, if we have got gold and we have got aluminium, between two different metals, they have different levels of electronegativity. That means they have different nature as far as the electrons are concerned. So how much they will attract the electron to itself will depend upon their electronic structure, which is also known as Fermi level. So based on that, one material is ready to give away electrons. So in this case, if gold is in contact with aluminium, some current can pass through this. That means the electrons can actually pass from one material to another. And this mainly happens in metals. So this kind of action also leads to some movement of electrons and that leads to some adhesion. So these are known as electronic friction. So basically these are the main factors for adhesion and in any kind of event 
one or two will be more dominant, not all will be dominant, but some, some of these factors will be dominant in the adhesive force. So starting with Van der Waals forces, electrostatic forces, hydrogen bond, cold welding or metallic adhesion, phononic force or atomic vibration and electronic friction. So depending upon the nature of the surface, we can find some of these mechanisms acting for the adhesive friction. So this is one part of the friction. The second part is the cohesive part. So as I said earlier that cohesive part is more mechanical in action. So it acts below the surface. So the adhesive force acts right at the surface whereas the cohesive part acts below the surface. So the cohesive friction has been divided into these parts. So the first one is elastic deformation of asperities. So as I said earlier there are asperities between of the two surfaces. So when one surface is moving these two asperities will interact with each other and therefore there will be elastic deformation. So this will bend towards the, mo the direction of the motion. For example, if this is harder material then this will make this move in, in the direction of motion and this will be elastic in nature. So this is the kind of force, force will be required for this elastic deformation. So some part of the energy will be spent as elastic deformation of asperities. Second is plastic deformation and fracture. So for example, the same asperities that we have, if we force this and this is the harder surface, then this asperities will deform in a plastic manner and at some point it might fracture. So this asperities might fracture away. So all these kind of works are to be done and that is the work which is part of the frictional work. So the second is plastic deformation and fracture of asperities. Another is plastic deformation and plowing or plowing. So this action is much deeper on the surface. So for example, if I've got this as surface and this is the harder particle, harder asperity of another surface, then this will penetrate inside because this is harder and this will make the softer surface deform in a plastic manner. So as it moves, some material will get piled up in the front and this is basically because of the plastic deformation. So plastic deformation or plowing of the surface. So it depends upon the relative hardness of the two materials. And fourth one is the abrasive. So abrasive deformation is also similar to plumbing but in this case the material actually will, will be removed. So if this end, this end is harder material and this one is relatively softer but it is not plastic, this is also kind of brittle material, then because of this action some particles will come out and a scratch will be formed here. So this is known as abrasive deformation. So these are the main four types of actions which are part of the cohesive uh, friction and the other part which we have discussed is part of the adhesive friction. So basically this is how we can define friction or we can understand about friction. Friction has got two components adhesive and cohesive friction and the adhesive friction is because when the two surfaces are very very in intimate close contact then many forces will act together and that will cause adhesive friction and 
the other actions which happens because of the roughness, because of the relative hardness between the two surfaces, the cohesive action which is more mechanical removal of the material, elastic deformation, plastic deformation, fracture, abrasive deformation and these actions will happen. The frictional work that happens at the interface consists of some or all of these actions that can take place and all depends upon the material themselves. So let me conduct this experiment again which I have shown you just now. So for example, if this is the eraser and I am making touch, making it touch this ruler. So here you can see that they are in contact but adhesion is quite little. So, so it gives low friction. But if I press it, there is very intimate contact between the two solids and you can see that at these points the two surfaces have very very close contact and therefore the adhesive force is extremely high compared to other surfaces where the two surfaces might touch but the forces are not that strong and here the forces are very strong and because of this you can see that the eraser is sticking almost glued to this surface. So that means if I tilt it like this, the friction force is extremely high. So moving them together, the friction is extremely high. So it all depends upon the material and how much load we apply. The another example that I have shown you is about scratching. So for example, if one surface is hard and another surface is soft, then the harder surface will penetrate the softer surface and therefore there will be some abrasion. So this is abrasive uh, friction and this abrasion can happen in a plastic manner that means the another surface which is getting scratched is deforming in a plastic manner so there is no material coming out. But depending upon the material for example if I have got another material here I have got this soap and if you slide a, a sharp nail on soap what will you see is that there is a lot of particles coming out. So these particles are basically we can call them abrasive particles or wear particles because the material has come out. So if I tap like this the material has gone and there is a scratch formed and there is material removal. So this one will be abrasive scratching whereas on this aluminum surface this is more like plastic plowing which is also known as plowing. Another experiment which is related to the electrostatic attraction uh, can be done in this way. Here I've got some paper pieces and these are the pencil shavings and I have got a comb here uh, which is made of plastic material and a handkerchief and also I've got a tissue which is wet so I have put some water here so now if I bring this comb close to these particles they don't get attracted so which means that this comb doesn't have any charge concentration and therefore it is not able to attract these particles. Now what I will do is I will just rub it. So this is like a sliding action happening. So because of this rubbing as you know a charge will be developed. And so that means this piece has got some charge on it and if I bring it closer to these particles they get attracted. As you can see So they are getting attracted to, uh, to this comb. So that means this comb has got some electrical charge and this charge, whether it is plus or minus, is able to induce some charge in these particles and they get attracted. That means the opposite, if this has got plus charge, then the minus charge of these particles will come towards the edge and it will get attracted. So if I rub it again, 
so they are getting attracted so that means it has got some charge now if I just pass it through wet things because this tissue has got some water what will happen is that this charge will get removed and now these particles are not getting attracted to to this plastic by rubbing action we accumulate charge in this plastic and since this is insulator even my holding has got no effect because the charge which is generated here doesn't come up to this level so the charge will get accumulated around here and this will attract the particles now if I just wet slightly then this charge gets removed because the water which has got dipole because of its H2O molecule and that basically pulls the charge away so that means in winter season when we have this static uh, experience that means when we walk on a carpet in winter when it is very dry air is very dry we walk on the carpet then we accumulate a lot of charge inside ourselves and when we touch anything which is conductor for example a doorknob and we feel that spark or um, we feel the electrical spark between our finger and the doorknob but this can be avoided if we make the air humid that means if we increase the humidity or if you wash your hand before you touch the knob in that case you will not feel that spark so this is how it works so basically this uh, electrostatic charge which is created because of sliding because of the frictional event helps in the adhesion process and which we measure as friction so let me recap what we have discussed just now so friction has been explained by the two term model so here in the two term we have got the interfacial or adhesive part and the cohesive part so the interfacial part is between the two surfaces right between the two surfaces that means there is adhesive interaction happening and the second part is the cohesive or plowing component which is because of the actions of the asperities of the harder surface so this depends upon the hardness of the two surfaces the relative hardness so this is the two term model that we have explained just now and the adhesive component or the interfacial friction is the overall attractive force experienced by two material surfaces when they are brought in close contact because of the presence of surface forces and other factors so the surface forces we have discussed are van der Waals forces the electrostatic forces acting between the two surfaces the hydrogen bond cold welding or metallic adhesion because of the diffusion of the atoms between the two surfaces we discussed the phononic friction which is basically atomic vibration and also we discussed the electronic friction which is because of the presence of electrons and the positive and negative charges that are created during the sliding action and the cohesive friction is the result of interactions between asperities or roughness protrusions of the two surfaces and or one surface asperity is scratching the surface of the other solid so this depends upon the hardness of the two surfaces we discussed the elastic deformation of asperities the plastic deformation and fracture of the asperities then plastic deformation or plowing of the softer solid so for example the harder asperity will plow the surface in a plastic manner and fourth part was scratching of the softer solid because of the abrasive action of the asperities of the harder surface so this is the main component of the frictional work that happens at the interface so thank you very much for watching this video and i hope you have learned something new about friction thank you